Hi, my name is Waleed Kudus. I'm really happy to be sharing this presentation with you at the NLP Summit today. Um, I originally, a few months ago, suggested that we call this, uh, make a talk about uh, Aviary, which is our open source LLM inference system. But since then, there's been so much movement, I wanted to take a broader perspective and talk about um, open source LLM inference more generally, so you can see the entire terrain and the entire scope of what we're looking at. So um, the first question I'd like to address is, why consider serving open LLMs in the first place? Um, and uh, there are three main reasons around um, cost, control of data, and transparency. Um, but there are some nuances here. Um, deploying open source LLMs is much harder than it looks. It's not just pull the data files off, hugging face, and you're ready to go. So there's a few different option, open source, uh, source options that I want to walk you through. And then I'm going to walk you through Ray LLM, our particular solution um, that makes it very easy to test different LLMs and completely understand if you can still use open models, even if you don't want to self-host. And I want to talk about those options too. So first, I'm going to discuss why use open LLMs to begin with. I'm going to discuss a little bit about why serving them is hard. I'll go through some options and then discuss Ray LLM. And then I'll discuss this alternative I talked about, which is using open models, but using commercial serving so you can have the best of both worlds. So um, there are always pros and cons to both open source and proprietary models. Obviously, the strongest models currently out there are GPT-4 and Claude 2. And there's nothing yet in the open source community that matches that level of quality overall. Secondly, these systems are um, simpler and easier to use in many ways. You don't have to worry about deployments. They're essentially serverless. One pattern that I've also noticed is that proprietary solutions have better instruction following and tend to follow your instructions more exactly. Um, and that's because they've spent more time on the RLHF aspects. Um, there are also some new features that are becoming available in proprietary systems that aren't yet available in open source systems, but we expect that to change fairly quickly around large context windows and function templates. Uh, on the other hand, there are many pros for open models as well. Uh, there's a lot dif of different options in, in terms of, let's say that you're looking at OpenAI, they have GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4, that's it. Whereas something like open source, you have the Llama family and there you have seven different choices of what to choose from, different sizes, some focused for code, some not focused for code, some more instruction following, and some more language follow based. So there's a lot more options. Um, you can often save money with open sources by using cheaper models um, or using fine tuning. And generally the flexibility is much greater and you don't have to deal with the question of being locked into one vendor for your model. You can go to multiple places to serve the same models. So let's talk about those advantages of open models and why you might want to do that. So we ran an experiment looking at summarization, uh, summarizing text of about 100,000 words. And the short version is that if you try to use something like GPT-4, um, it's about $5.50 per 100,000 words, whereas something like Llama is about 20 cents per um, 100,000 words. That's obviously a huge price difference um, that matters. But the obvious counter argument is, doesn't that come with a loss of performance? So um, it's very hard to generalize for many, many domains. But in our experience, at least looking at summarization, and in fact, one specific aspect of summarization, which is, are summaries factually accurate? We see here in this uh, uh, test case of summary ranking, which is a typical application that's used to evaluate um, the accuracy of summaries in terms of their um, factual accuracy. We see that GPT-4, Human, and Llama 2, 70B are all within the same ballpark of around 84% accuracy. Um, and that's usually good enough for, more uh, for, for mo many applications. Now, you need to look at it in your own application. And there are some, some surprises here, like the fact that Llama 2, 70B uh, performs GPT-3.5 Turbo. That may not be universally true. But when it comes to summarization, that's definitely what we saw as we ran these experiments. So you can have the low cost and the quality too. Uh, the second issue um, is really around data and privacy. Many people we've spoken to are not really comfortable sending emails or other sensitive information to OpenAI. 
you know, I'm not really trying to create uncertainty, uh, fear, uncertainty and doubt, but at any scale, we speak to many customers and many customers have expressed concerns about doing this. A further complication is if you are offering um, a, a service to someone else, um, how do you explain to them where their data is going? And finally, there might be legal restrictions that prevent you from being able to um, share your data in particular countries, depending on the circumstances. So you might see this as like, I have to either choose open AI for everything or, or, um, uh, or, or uh, anthropic for everything, or I have to choose open source for everything. Um, but, you know, increasingly we are seeing hybrids. And that's a very interesting thing. Uh, one trend that we are seeing across systems is to solve a particular problem, you don't just use one LLM, you use a combination of LLMs. Um, GPT-4 is still the, the, um, the golden standard for prototyping, uh, doing automated evaluations. If a task requires planning or analogical reasoning, the only real downside of GPT-4 is really its cost. And it is very, very expensive. Uh, as we saw, three, you know, 30 times more expensive than some of the open source options. But I want to give you an example of how these complex systems are being built. So in-house for Ray, an open source project that helps people scale their AI models, we've taken our documentation and created um, a chatbot that you can ask questions, can generate source code for you and everything else. But as you can see, it consists of multiple systems. You know, the first the query comes in, and simultaneously, we send it to a supervised classifier as well as sending it to um, our vector DB to get context. This is an approach called retrieval augmented generation. But the classifier has some awareness about what the strengths of the open source models are and what the strengths of ChatGPT are. And based on the query, it will direct the output to one of those two things. Uh, in our building of this application, about 95% of the traffic um, goes to the open source LLM, and about 5% goes to GPT-4 in this case. Now, if you imagine that we're doing about um, a few thousand queries a day, you do the math on this. If we went purely with the chat GPT route, that would cost us about $36,000. If you were to go purely for the OSS route, that would cost us about $900. But by having the supervised classifier that decides either of these two options, we can get something approaching the quality of ChatGPT and GPT-4, but for only two and a half thousand. So still considerably more than the pure open source solution, but still 10 times less than the pure open, uh, the pure proprietary solution as well. So you might say, okay, I get it. I want to do this. These models are available on Hugging Face, right? I just have to go to Hugging Face and grab the models and then I can just wrap it in fast API and do it. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Our experiences with the difficulty of serving LLMs came from us building a front end that we wanted to allow people to experience different LLMs so that they could make their choices. And what we found is that, you know, each different LLM has different roles, different ways of marking, you know, this is the system input and this is the user input and this is the assistance response. Each one has different stop tokens. Um, there are different accelerators, some which work with some LLMs and some which don't. There are different supported, um, supported formats. Some GPUs, some models require particular GPUs. And generally, there was a lot of tweaks that you had to do and different ways to support batching and streaming. So those are some of the challenges when you actually come to deploy or make available an open model. So now we have open models like Llama 2B, 7, Llama 270B, but there's also the software to um, deploy those models. And generally, I wanted to give you an overview of your options on that particular front. There's really, um, aside from our option, which I'll talk about next, there's three options that are gaining popularity. Uh, one is VLLM. This is a project out of Berkeley. Um, it's one of the highest performance implementations out there with very high performance. Um, but unless you use Ray, it's limited to a single GPU. Uh, and if you want to use tensor parallelism or multiple machines, you have to use Ray as well. Um, Hugging Face used to make something available called um, text generation inference. And that was a really interesting 
infrastructure for serving LLMs that was a combination of Rust and Python. Um, up until version 0 0.94, it was completely open source. But around uh, that version, before they released 1.0, they released it under a much more restrictive license that didn't allow you to serve um, traffic commercially using text generation inference. And finally, the other option is Triton or Tensor RT LLM. Now, Tensor RT LLM hasn't quite been released yet, but we know it's coming around the corners. It's an updated version of an older library that they had called Faster Transformers. And this one's great on NVIDIA hardware. But of course, if you want to use other things, accelerators or AMD hardware or um, AWS Trainiums or Inferentia, you're, you're out of luck if you're trying to use Triton or Tensor RT. So I want to talk a little bit about Ray and Ray LLM in particular. So Ray is a highly popular open source system for scalable AI computing. And you can find out more about Ray at uh, ray.io. I don't have time um, to go into it at depth, but it's a beautifully architected system that gives you scalability um, without the complexity of um, what you usually need to do to scale systems. Um, it supports multiple GPUs and multiple machines. And in particular, RayServe, which Array LLM is built on, has really, really um, great support for auto scaling. And auto scaling is incredibly important for these applications because of the cost, right? So, you know, some of these machines, if you're trying to serve a Llama 270B model, it's costing you $8 an hour. And if you have 10 of them because you're provisioning for peak, that's $80 an hour, which can be prohibitively expensive. But what if we could add those nodes dynamically? That's the type of thing that Ray LLM allows you to do. Uh, and it also supports streaming and multiple backends. So there's some evolutions happening as we speak in the uh, open source um, model serving in uh, teams, right? That's really what we're seeing. We're seeing a move towards uh, performance and a focus on performance. And really that's the key differentiator between these options. Um, there's been a lot of focus on that. One example is something called continuous batching. So it turns out that with these GPUs, they're very, very deep pipelines and you have to use batching to get more traffic out of them. And the ap approaches for doing the batching are becoming more and more advanced. Um, increasingly, we are moving towards uh, the v, you know, paged attention, which is a feature that was introduced in VLLM, becoming the standard. And what we're seeing evolve is that VLLM and Ray LLM are getting closer in the sense that VLLM builds on top of Ray and Ray LLM can offer VLLM as a backend with Ray handling all of the details. So essentially what you get is you get the best of both worlds. You get the flexibility, the scalability, and uh, the, um, the uh, redundancy features of Ray LLM with the speed and the performance of VLLM. And we plan to release that into open source incredibly soon. So I wanna talk a little bit, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes getting into the details of how it works. Um, what we do is that each LLM has its own uh, config file. So this is why we uh, wanted to make it easy. So if you wanna add support for a new config file, I'm gonna share this tab now and let me enlarge it so that people can see it more clearly. This is all that you would need to upload a particular, um, uh, to, to set up a model. So you declare factors like how you want it to auto scale. You specify where to find the files and which um, engine you wanna use. In this case, we're using the older open source text generation inference engine. And then you also specify things like properties of the, the model in terms of the batch size and the temperature and so on, plus the inputs that you want it to be processed. So this is like a script. Uh, you don't really, ideally, you can see here that we have a list of existing models that have already existed and um, are, are available for everybody to use. And developing this, this database or this uh, registry of models is one of the key things we do that gives you the flexibility that you need. Um, now, that flexibility is very easy to use. To deploy it, all you need to do is to use a command like this one. So you literally say Avery run and you specify the uh, YAML file 
Uh, you, we make this available as, of course, source, but it's also available as a Docker image that you can install. Um, and really, it's just as easy as that. And then finally, we also have an um, OpenAI compatible API. Uh, in addition, we have our own front end. So that's avery.anyscale.com. Um, you can go experiment with that. That's a live instance of this particular model. And you can put whatever models you want here. At this particular time, we're focused on the uh, Llama series of models. But you, know, you can put one input here. Um, how do people like the NLP Summit? And we can submit that. And very quickly, we get um, details from three different models um, outlining what they feel and what they like about the NLP Summit. Um, you can see here we're getting statistics on like the rate of token output, the overall latency, and so on. So this gives you the option to very quickly compare the output of different LLMs. In this case, um, the, the um, LLMs from um, Llama, and to choose which ones are better. Now, in other cases, you might actually be uh, looking at something like um, um, uh, one of, you might be looking at different fine tunes of your model. So let me now go back to the presentation. And uh, one thing I'd also like to, to emphasize is that we offer an open AI uh, compatible API. So you can see from this API here, that literally there are no code changes required. If your code already uses GPT-4, literally all you have to do is redefine some environment variables and um, change the model name, and that's about it. But what if you don't want to self-host? What if you want to use open source models, but not necessarily open source serving because you still have to manage the machines and everything else? Um, there are two products that we're also making available that give you that access. So one is AnyScale Public Endpoints, which is the most cost-effective solution and also supports fine-tuning. And the second one is Private Endpoints, which is effectively the same as a managed version of Aviary. So um, AnyScale Endpoints is a very, very cheap way where it's very much like OpenAI. You pay us something like a dollar per million tokens and you can use it. Uh, but the other alternative is that you can use Private Endpoints and they give you the complete flexibility to deploy whatever it is that you want to deploy with your own configuration options and to customize and your own fine-tuned models. So just to summarize what we have to say, I, I think the key takeaways as you consider your options from using um, open LLMs is there are reasons to consider uh, open LLMs around controlling your data, that transparency, the cheaper cost, not always at the cost of quality, so you can have your cost and quality um, both at the same time. But deploying these open LLMs like Llama 2 and so on can be tricky. You have options, and we discussed some of those different options there, including VLLM and, um, uh, and uh, text generation inference. One of the options available to you is Ray LLM, which used to be called Aviary. Um, and it makes it very easy to launch LLMs in production. And if you don't want to self host, we also offer commercial options that still use variants of Ray LLM, but um, managed in a way that you can find convenient. So with that, I really want to say thank you. I really want to thank um, the, 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 the people who created the NLP Summit for inviting me to, 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 to present today. Um, in terms of other follow-ups, that's my email address. Please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, you can find out more about um, Aviary and in the open source and in our commercial offerings at endpoints.anyscale.com. And thank you very, very much for your time.